That game was insane. Across the board. Like, like insane. From puck drop to the overtime. That should have never went to overtime because that was some of the most garbage officiating I've ever seen in my entire life. And we have seen some garbage officiating this season, ladies and gentlemen. What's going on? Welcome back to another recap reaction for the Winnipeg Jets 2021-2022 season. This is game 66 out of 82 where the Winnipeg Jets win over the Columbus Blue Jackets and Patrick Linus return to Winnipeg by a score of 4-3 to in overtime. But let's be real, it should have been a 3-2 regulation win. My god, the refereeing was terrible tonight. We'll get into that goal, but god, we got a lot of stuff to talk about in this one. Before we even get any further, make sure to subscribe regards to the team that you root for, as well as sign up for a BetUS account today. BetUS is one of the top online sports booking websites in North America. They offer everything from sports booking to online casinos, horse racing, and so much more. If you are an avid gambler and someone who likes to bet and put their money where their mouth is, sign up for a BetUS account today with code PEGCITY and the link down in the description. If you use code PEGCITY when you sign up, you will get 125% cash deposit on your first deposit of $100 into your BetUS account. Out. Bet US, thank you so much for sponsoring this channel. And with all that being said, know your limit, play within it, must be 19 plus to play. Let's jump into this video because god damn it, man, this game was crazy. Not only just because Patrick Line is back in Winnipeg and I didn't really know what to expect, but as you guys saw of courtesy thanks to Zach and Carter from the Nolan Hockey Podcast, they sent me that footage. That was the first real um uh, uh, I guess uh, entrance that we saw Patrick Liney on the Jumbotron when the fans really got to uh, give him a really good welcome. I'm not even going to talk about or show the video uh, tribute that he got because it was pathetic. They gave him a like a what a 30 second video of Liney, Rosovic, and Pascal Vincent. Like seriously, you're going to combine one of the greatest players in 2.0 history into a 30 second little snippet. He should have had his own video, but I'm not going to get into that. All I'm going to say about the whole video tribute thing is Derek Forbert had about just as much time on his video tribute as much of an applause as Line got on his video tribute. So that is a pretty bad look on this organization. Moving on from that, though, let's talk about, let's get the elephant out of the room. Line versus PLD. Last time we played Columbus, Line was out. His father had tragically passed away, and I believe he was still recovering from an injury as well on top of that. So he wasn't in. We didn't really get to grade how they were going to play head-to-head. -head. This was the first time since the traders went down where we could see both these guys go head-to-head. -head. And let's, you know, talk a little bit about it. Everyone wants to know about it, so I'm going to give you guys my opinion. I think they both had really, really good games. Patrick Laine was really, really uh, dominant out there when it comes to his shots. Uh, he had four really good shots on net, had a lot of good shots opportunities. Um, I really liked his game tonight. I thought Patrick Laine had a really good game. I thought Pierre-Luc Dubois had a really good game. So I think even though I, I will never like the trade because Laine is one of my favorite players and will be for the rest of my life probably, the hype that was surrounding him and just winning him in the lottery, getting that second round pick... Uh, Pierre-Luc Dubois is great, but he'll never replace what line it was to this team and the city and this franchise and the run we went on with him. Unless we win a cup, maybe down the line, I can't say, but right now, you know, I don't care about production. It's just, you know, my own opinion on the trade, and... At the end of the day, I'll always miss Line. I'm happy PLD's having a great, uh, f f his fr I guess his career year, I would say. But Line is having a pretty damn good year too, and I miss I miss him. But I like PLD, and I think they both had pretty damn good games. So we can finally put that to bed and just talk about this game as it was, because the first period was really, really good hockey. You know, Line gets a crazy ovation, the building's buzzing, and. You get a really good start to this game. Seven minutes into that first period, um, you have Dominic Toninato uh, getting his sixth goal of the season. I had a guy comment on my video the other day, why do the Jets still play Dominic Toninato? Well, guy who commented on my video, he had two points tonight. So I think that's why they keep playing him. He's a league minimum guy with six points goals in the season. I think he's got like 13 or 14 points on the year. That's not terrible for fourth line depth. I always say if you can get like 20 points out of a guy on the fourth line on a really cheap contract, that's a good fourth line player. I like Dominic Toninato. The Jets kind of found a underrated gem, I feel like, for a fourth line role in him. Could there be better guys on there? Probably, but I'm not going to complain with Dominic Toninato. He had a good game, and he gets his sixth of the year from Dylan and Sanford. Sanford registering his first point as a Winnipeg Jet. Uh, I like the Sandman. I thought he had a good game tonight. I thought that he had a good game the other night, even though it wasn't as strong as his debut. Uh, but he's looked to be an okay uh, asset so far to this team. I liked Mason Appleton as well. I really, really liked that line of him. And uh, yeah, Lowry looked good as well. So I guess we're going to have to see how that line continues to play. But Lowry, Stanford, and Appleton looked to be as good as a third line as we thought they would when they were acquired on Monday. So yeah, the first period is really good. Um, you have, the, like I said, the fourth lines play good. You get a lot of good energy. And the Jets are up 2 nothing before you know it because Kyle Connor gets his 41st of the season on a beautiful, nasty, short-handed goal breakaway where he just undresses Elvis Mers Lincolns. Uh, that, again, was assisted from Dominic Toninato. Here's his sixth assist of the season. Uh, so, yeah. 
you have a really good start to this game, and the Jets are kind of buzzing. They're playing good hockey. They're flying. Hellebuck's making good saves. Elvis making good saves on the other end. And this is a really good back and forth game with a lot of good pressure. Um, that, that not even just to mention how good this game just felt to watch. Like this felt like the Jets were going all out. This was an entertaining game. Like I've said for the last, I feel like two weeks with the recap reactions. I don't think the Jets make the playoffs. I know they can, but I just don't see it realistically happening. So at the end of the day, if you can provide me with an entertaining game, because I know these guys aren't going to tank, that's all I care about. So I got, I'm, I'm happily, I'm thoroughly entertained tonight. So that's all I can say about that. The first period was good. Boquist gets a power play goal. Um, again, refereeing was terrible tonight. Uh, he, it was his 11th goal of the season from Nyquist and Rosovic, former first overall pick by the Winnipeg Jets. Uh, yeah, I never liked Jack Rosovic, and he was whatever tonight. Uh, just like how he was whatever every night that he was in Winnipeg. He's a mediocre player, nothing super special. I know he's been better in Columbus than what he was here, but I never liked Rosovic, never liked him even when we drafted him. So that was a pretty good first period. I liked the first period. I thought that the Jets were kind of the stronger team, but it was evenly matched, and, you know, it looked good. Like, I was pretty happy, and let's see what the second brings, I'm thinking, you know? We got, we got this. And then Brendan Gauntz, three minutes and 22 seconds into the second period, and it's a tie game. I'm like, okay, well, we're going to have to play it a little closer. But you know what, though? At that time, it's a tie game. I'm not worried either, because it doesn't feel like a game where the Jets are just barely squeaking out with a lead from time to time. They're playing good hockey, and the Blue Jackets were playing really good hockey, too. These were two teams I felt tonight were really evenly matched, it felt like, on the ice. And you get a really good second period as well of a lot of good back and forth hockey. Um, and also one of the best power plays we've had all season long. Why can't you shoot the puck like that on every power play? What's wrong with you? Why, why don't you do that every night? It's not that hard. I scream at my TV along with every other Jets fan out there to shoot, shoot, shoot. And you never do it. But tonight, all of a sudden, you want it to all be Patrick Liney and you're just ripping every shot left, right, and center. It was beautiful. You didn't score on it. But God damn it, do that every game. God, I would just, like, can you imagine if the Jets just played like that on a power play every game? Every game we had, like, six shots on a power play, just ripping everything we could. That's what we should be doing more often when we have the guys and shooters that we have out there. Not just feeding it to Kyle Connor. Josh Morrissey gets a power play goal for his 11th of the season, adding on to his career high for this year. From Shifley and Wheeler, Wheeler's 41 assists on the season. Uh, he's, you know, Wheeler's been pretty good lately, I'm not gonna lie. I did not like, though, Wheeler on that line. Uh, with PLD and Connor tonight. I just I, I did not think that was a good fit. Uh, all those guys had great games, ironically, but they didn't play best together when they were all on the ice. They kind of had their moments in splits. Obviously, Kyle Connor had that shorthanded goal. Uh, and then on the power play, Wheeler has his points and he looks better. So this whole period and the whole game, you know, I just didn't like that line. You know, change the lines a little bit. I, I, I know what you might be thinking. This game was evenly matched. Why you want to change the lines? There were times where it just felt the lines weren't as balanced as they could have been. Um, and, and that's all I'm kind of saying. It was a good game, but I still think for the future of this team trying to make the playoffs, that, that false hope that they can, you got to have better balanced lines. And the other thing we got to talk about from that second period is Logan Stanley is terrible. And actually, I say second period, but this bleeds into the third period, but as well as the whole overarching game. Logan Stanley's crap. And I'm not just talking about plugging in Villy Hainola because that's what I want to see. Logan Stanley is terrible. Like, like, you know how we always used to say that, oh, Logan Stanley is obviously going to play over Nathan Beaulieu because Nathan Beaulieu is bad. Logan Stanley is playing just as bad as Nathan Beaulieu did in his worst stretches. No word, no joke, no word of a lie. Why the hell are we continuously playing this guy? We have so many good young defensive prospects with the Moose. Hell, even give Jonathan Kovacevic a look before you put Logan Stanley in again. Like, seriously. Either play Villy or fucking do something else to get, get, like, just take Stanley out. Put the bag of pucks you got for Nathan Beaulieu in there. Put him, uh, stack the, law, the the goal line behind Hellebuck, and maybe it'll do more than what Nate Logan Stanley does. He's terrible. Like, I, like, I know I rip on Logan Stanley a lot tonight, but Logan Stanley was terrible. Like, like legit terrible. He blew it uh, on, a, on a goal. Two goals tonight he almost caused. One goal he did. The other one, thank God, that didn't happen. But seriously, Logan Stanley, get out of this lineup. Go in the press box and think about your decision making because you are not a good defenseman. You're terrible, buddy. The third period starts, the Jets come in, and it is the definition of even matched hockey. Back and forth opportunities, left, right, and center, everyone's playing great. You got some grit. Stanley, uh, Stastny, excuse me, gets robbed by Elvis Merzlinkins on a great play from Shifley. I believe it was Shifley that fed it over to him. You got so much good back and forth hockey, and we're winning still. You gotta remember that. Josh Morrissey put us in, right? We got the win. We're leading. We're going in. Final couple minutes. We're playing good. Columbus is pressuring. Eric Comrie, fantastic down the stretch. 
all the best elements being brought to a boil in the witch's cauldron. We're stirring it away, getting ready for this pot, and... <laughs> the worst refereeing I've ever seen in my life. Josh Morrissey, five feet out from the boards, gets cross-checked in the numbers into the boards. Thank God he's okay. Gets up, gives a light slash to the back of, I don't even know whose player it was, on, uh, of his leg. Falls down, completely sells it, and while looking back, making eye contact with the ref. The first two is, ah, looking right at the ref. They pull their goalie, they get the power play, and they score. I believe they scored with... 14 seconds left on the clock. A pathetic. The worst refereeing I've seen. It, God damn it, I would say almost all season long, I feel like. To call a call like that with that much time left, pathetic. You should lose your job. You're nothing more than a screw-up and a loser. Whoever that ref was, I hope you slip on a banana peel or walk under a ladder and get bad luck for however long you get bad luck for walking underneath a ladder. Because God damn it, you're a terrible, terrible referee. My three-year-old cousin, my 90-year-old grandma who's probably blind. I don't have a 90-year-old grandma who's blind, but goddammit, it's some other universe I do, and she's still a better ref than you. So get your head out of your ass and do your job properly. It's pathetic, and it's getting damn right annoying. We go to overtime, and I'm thinking, I bet everyone's thinking at this point, Patrick Lanning is going to rip one the same way he ripped it against Elise, isn't he? God damn it. God damn it. And then, reverse pseudo card, the best jet, Nikolai Ehlers, on a breakaway, Beat Elvis Mers Lincolns. It's a 4-3 final in OT for the Winnipeg Jets. Liney's home op uh, return is spoiled for him, I guess. The Jets win. Rub it in his face. I don't know how you want to celebrate it. This was a great game. Terrible refereeing. Great for entertainment value. If I was at this game, I would have got probably wasted and lost my shit because this was so much fun to watch. And I'm all the way out here three provinces away in Vancouver. I can only imagine what it was like in the uh, MTS Center, Canada Life Center, whatever you want to call it. It was probably an amazing atmosphere, and if you were there, why don't you go down in the comment section below and tell me how awesome of an experience it was to watch Lion in the homecoming game and all the other awesome, crazy stuff that happened in this game. So with all that being said, I hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe if you enjoyed this. Uh, follow me on Twitter, Instagram, check out all the links down in the description below as always. Thank you so much for watching this video. Peace, love, and positivity as always. I will see you guys in the next video very, very soon. Go Jets go! Have a great rest of your night, and... Nah, I'm not just kidding. Bye-bye. Have a great night, guys. Bye.